Today is the 75th birthday of uh, Fred Grandy, your yeoman purser on the Love Boat. Hence the Love Boat theme music with Jack Jones in the background. And Fred Grandy went from the Love Boat to being a U.S. congressman, by the way. I think out of Kansas, but I'm not 100% I thought it was Iowa. Is it Iowa? Somewhere in that block. Yeah, Iowa. All right, we are ready right now for one of those Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader competitions. (laughs) That voice you heard in the background belongs to Trina Bartlett. Trina, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. You can't keep me quiet. I'm sorry I interrupted your discussion about Fred Grandy, but I'm like, no, I think he was Iowa. That, you know, that's the, we call it the Kelly Tanksley rule. Where okay. Remember Kelly? Oh, oh, yes. I knew right? Kelly well. Yes. Right? So Kelly, went, she was so energetic. Yes. Which she couldn't stay quiet enough to, to last through the introductions. <laughs> So she would always just blurt, blurt stuff out yeah, before we be said me. hello. I've won talking contests, so yeah. You can win a talking contest? I can win a talking contest. Well, that's awesome. Well, congratulations to you, too, because I understand Sunrise Rotary has recognized you as oh, their yes. Rookie of the Year. <laughs> Thank you. My, yeah. my major award. Congratulations. I'm it my major award. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, very nice. Uh, you are uh, with us today on behalf of Boys and Girls Clubs. Absolutely, yes. Right? Yes. And uh, uh, Stacy sent you along. So uh, you have to do a good job representing Stacy here today. Okay, I'll she's try. pretty good. I'll do my best. She is. She's great. She's wonderful. Yeah. Hey, uh, first and foremost, uh, how are you folks doing there right now post COVID? Are you back up to your regular numbers? We are still trying to get our numbers back up, um, especially with the teen population. I think what happened is that a lot of the older kids they realized, hey, I can just stay home and not have to have parental supervision in the afternoon Mm -hmm. and also we tend to um, grow our kids so they start out young and then once they're very engaged with the clubs they get just you know move on up and stay with us and we lost a cohort for you know a year and a half two years where the kids just didn't come and so you don't have that cohort moving through that's um, enthusiastic about all we have to offer how about with volunteers we're doing really well with volunteers, I think. Um, it's, it's quite, um, I just really appreciate the outpouring of support that we get from people. If we ask for something, they come and they show up. And right now we're running a program during the summer called Leaders Are Readers, where we have leaders in the community coming in and reading to the kids. And I think we're doing it twice a week in each club. And seeing just people step up and read their favorite children's books to our kids is great. You have a flyer there in front of you. I do, because I can't remember everything. I try. Mm-hmm. I try to think I'm super, super good. But, yeah, so one of the things that happened is that we did have a, uh, I don't even know how you say this, Fredo, Frito, Fredo. It's a toy Jeep that's a child-sized Jeep that is actually a Jeep that runs. Spell it for me. Right here. F-R-E-D-D-O. Fredo? I would call it Fredo. That's what I think. I think yeah. it's Fredo. Um, but it has even has like where you can plug in Bluetooth and have music. It runs. Mm. The kids can ride it around. But it was donated to us. So we are running a raffle right now for $5 for a chance to win that at the end of the summer. Very nice. Where do you get tickets? Um, you can call our office um, at 304 304- Two six three one eight three two, or um, we will be out and about selling them. Very nice, Mr. Barrett. How, how, oh, good, big, how big is that thing? It's big. It's big. Well, I'm looking at again, trying to remember everything, yeah. but I can't. But it's designed to hold somebody up to 133 pounds. So. Not, oh. not you, Doyle. You're out. <laughs> okay. But you can put your leg. In, you can put your leg in it and kind of run along with it. Got it. <laughs> I would be out too. Mr. Barrett, definitely out. Oh, not even, yeah, plus 100. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Trina, we often uh, talk about um, you know, the boys and girls and the, the club down, downtown, mm-hmm. but can you talk a little bit about the outreach uh, and things that the Boys and Girls Club does uh, all over ca- the county? Absolutely. So first of all, it's really important to note that we do have clubs in all three of the Eastern Panhandle County. So we, we have the Martinsburg Club, which everyone, you know, when you're downtown Martinsburg, you obviously see. But we also have a club in Ranson. Well, it's in Charlestown on the Ranson-Charlestown border. And we have one in Berkeley Springs. So we are serving youth ages 6 to 18 in all three counties at the club. Um, right now we're running our summer program, but during the school year, we also have school-based programming where the kids stay after school and have extra help with homework or tutoring or anything for to help them with their academics. And uh, we pay 
uh, teachers through our 21st Century Grant. We pay teachers to actually provide that service. And then some of the kids just stay at the school and their parents pick them up. Um, if not, they get bused to our club um, in Martinsburg. So that program is, is primarily in, Mar or in Berkeley County, but we do have sites at schools throughout the county. Okay. Uh, and I don't know, recently um, you all had a large HVAC project. Uh, where, where are you at on, at least that was my understanding. We have so many different projects okay. going on right now. I'm like, well, which one was that? So we had, um, the building that we have in Martinsburg is mm -hmm. an extremely old building, if you've been in there. And it's, so there's obviously when you have an old facility, you have constant needs for repairs and upgrades. So uh, we had significant bathroom repairs um, last summer, and there might have been some HVAC thrown in there. It was before my time, so uh, I came on board with the Boys and Girls Club last August, so I don't know everything that sure. happened before then. But, um, yeah, we had some significant um, renovations going on at the Martinsburg Club, and uh, we're also looking at trying to get an elevator to mm -hmm. put us into compliance because right now we don't have an elevator to get kids up and down the stairs when they need to. So we're working on that. But we are also um, have hired, um, we're getting ready to launch a capital campaign. And we have hired an architect to do drawings of some additional renovations that we plan to do at the club, including moving the gym um, if you've ever been to the club, the gym is on the third floor, and if you're trying to do anything on the second floor, it can get pretty noisy because all you hear are thumping feet running back and forth and back and forth. So our dream is to move that gym into the back parking lot and then build some administrative offices because right now our administrative offices aren't at any of the clubs. We're in a separate building. Um, and so get everybody together. So um, we also have some major plumbing work that needs to be done there. So it's just ongoing. Sure. And are, are you able to talk a little bit about um, the the annual budget that the Boys and Girls Club has and then kind of off the top of your head, just a breakdown of, of how much of that is from community support? Um, you know, I actually did that breakdown, and I can't remember specifically <laughs> what the numbers were. Um, so we it's really a mix that we couldn't do without any of our sources of support. Um, so we do get um, federal grants like for the feeding program for our, our summer meals and our school year meals programs to help feed the kids. So uh, we have that and that's pretty significant. We also have funding to run Camp Mariposa, which is a uh, program for children who are in a family that has been impacted by substance use disorder. And we run that camp. Uh, it's a sleepaway camp once a month as well as we do programming every month so it, but then we also depend on corporations and businesses for grants so we're always writing grants um, we depend on government we are always uh, trying to show our government leaders the the impact of investing in our kids now because you're going to be growing them into community leaders and then I would say probably I think when I looked at it last it's like 20 percent is just straight out community donations from individuals and, that want to support the club so and then of course we do fundraisers so it's a mix of a little bit of everything and we literally need everything we get okay. John uh Roughly, approximately, how many kids are you serving at the moment? Um, so we in have, the three counties, in right. all three counties. So in the summer program right now, I think it's right around 300 kids okay. in all three counties. And that's just an estimate because I don't run the numbers on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Um, again, I know our numbers are down for previous years for a variety of reasons, but um, there was a waiting list in the Martinsburg Club. I know that. So. Uh, and how about uh, during the school year for the after-school programs? Um, I would say it runs, um, it's under 1,000 now. I okay. couldn't tell you the hundreds, but it's in the hundreds, but under 1,000 currently. Okay. All right. Thanks. Trina Bartlett, our guest here from the Boys and Girls Clubs. And uh, Trina, what's the age group, generally speaking, when kids tend to go to the Boys Clubs more than else? So we, boys and girls we, clubs. we yeah, I, I know how old you are by saying Boys Club rather than Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'm 60. <laughs> six <to> zero. <laughs> um, so we serve starting at age six through 18. And I would say the majority of the kids that we serve right now are probably in that first grade through fourth or fifth grade level. 
Um, but we do have some teenagers. We do have some of the intermediate and older kids, middle school kids as well. Do you ever run out of money? Um, well, that's not a question you should be asking, right? <laughs> we, um, how do I say this? We manage our money well, mm -hmm. and we are probably positioned right now better financially than in previous years. So uh, we're going to make payroll. But one of the most um, expensive, you know, the, the, the biggest cost for running the Boys and Girls Club is our staff. Sure. And As with so, most charities. Right. So that's always the priority. And then all of these other things that we were talking about, of course, are secondary. So we want to raise money um, to make sure that we have good facilities for the kids. We want to raise money to be sure that we can provide good activities and good, uh, you know, resources for the kids. But the bottom line is if we don't have the staff to, you know, if we can't pay the staff, then we can, can't provide any services. So that is always our most important objective every payroll. Um, and we're able to do that. So, I mean, I think we're doing pretty well in mm -hmm. looking at our finances, but I hate to say that, yeah, we're flush with money and we can just, you know, don't need it because we do. We definitely do. And, and um, we are constantly on a daily basis looking at, you know, where can we make sure we have the money to meet the needs. Is, is food part of your budget for these kids? It is because we, we do get the federal grant for the feeding program. Um, and, of course, that is um, – very prescribed about what we can and cannot provide and you know with the, with that funding and and the kind of foods that we provide um, but we also thank goodness and this is so wonderful because um, we also have staff that have to prepare the food when you have when you have food you have to prepare it so yep, and you gotta be able to store it yeah, exactly so um, one of the blessings that we have in this community is how generous some of our restaurants are so this summer for example we've had a lot of different restaurants step up and provide meals for the kids for their lunches, um, which has been really helpful. So like yesterday, I think one of the clubs had Panda Express, or two days ago, one of the clubs had Panda Express that provided meals for all the kids in Martinsburg yesterday in the Jefferson County Club. Pizza City provided all of the food. So um, there's a lot of ways that, that local businesses and local community members can really help um, by giving what they do best. So. Is the food situation a major part of what you need to provide? Yes, ab absolutely. Um, I think everybody knows that when kids are hungry, they're not emotionally where they need to be. I, mean, I was joking about being hangry earlier, but um, it is really important, especially when these kids are growing, that they have the nutrition that they need. So being able to provide those meals for the kids is extremely important. And um, I've been at the clubs on numerous times during the school year after school. And I mean, they come in and they're immediately ready, ready for dinner. Like it's like, you know, three 30 in the afternoon and they are ready to eat. So right. um, yeah, I, I think it's very important. I think that um, if you look at what the mission of the Boys and Girls Club is, which is to grow our kids into productive and caring citizens, that's really comprehensive. So it's making sure they have the nutrition they need, making sure they have the activities and the recreational and the opportunity to move their bodies. It's engaging their minds. It's encouraging them and providing those mentors um, that can be role models and supportive um, our kids come from all different backgrounds, um, you know, every kind of background that you can think of. So there are some kids that come from very stable family homes where um, their parents are very engaged and very involved. We have kids who we worry about them sometimes um, and keep a close eye on what's going on in the home situation. And then we have kids that are in foster care that haven't had much stability in their life at all so kind of the continuum and um, one of the most important things that I think we can do for those kids is to show them they matter and to show that there is an adult or adults in their life that do care about them and will listen to them and will encourage them and will see their their strengths and help build on this. Trina, we are just about out of time. If you could tell us again about the raffle and where you can buy tickets. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So, yes, we are auctioning off this Fredo toy Jeep that it can hold up to 133 pounds and uh, has lights and music and all sorts of exciting bells and whistles. And it's uh, we're selling the tickets for $5 a piece. The raffle is on August 31st. 
And if you want them, you can call us at 304-263-1832. Trina, great to see you again. Great to see you. And congratulations on being Rookie of the Year. Thank you. (laughs) Trina Bartlett.